It was a quiet, residential street in Medicine Hat, Canada, where the Richardson family lived. But on April 23, 2006, the peaceful neighborhood was forever changed by a gruesome and senseless crime. 12-year-old Jasmine Richardson and her 23-year-old boyfriend, Jeremy Steinke, had hatched a twisted plan to massacre her entire family. Jasmine had always been a happy, social girl with a bright future ahead of her. She was a good student, loved playing with her friends, and had a close relationship with her family. But everything changed when she met Steinke at a punk rock show. She was instantly taken with his dark goth lifestyle and even joined the website VampireFreaks.com. She would wear dark makeup to make herself look much older than she was, and spent hours online chatting with Steinke. But Steinke's own upbringing was far from wholesome. He came from an abusive home where his mother was an alcoholic and her partner physically abused him. Kids at school bullied him and by the time he met Richardson, he had already attempted suicide. Steinke had developed an elaborate persona, claiming to be a 300-year-old werewolf and wearing a vial of blood around his neck. Jasmine was mesmerized by this dark, mysterious figure, and they quickly began dating. When Jasmine's parents, Mark and Deborah, found out about the relationship, they were understandably concerned. Steinke was 11 years older than Jasmine, and they could see the negative influence he was having on their daughter. They forbade her from seeing Steinke, and this only fueled the couple's anger and resentment towards them, Steinke wrote on his blogging platform. Their throats I want to slit. Finally, there shall be silence. Their blood shall be payment. Jasmine, who had never shown any signs of violence or aggression before, became consumed with thoughts of murder. She proposed the plan to kill her parents to Steinke. In an email, she wrote, It begins with me killing them and ends with me living with you. Steinke, who had a history of violence and had already attempted suicide, was receptive to the idea and replied, well, I love your plan, but we need to get a little more creative with, like, details and stuff. The night before the murders, the couple watched the movie Natural Born Killers, a film about a young couple who embark on a killing spree. The movie, which is known for its graphic violence, only served to fuel their twisted desires. And then, in the early hours of April 23rd, they carried out their heinous plan. Deborah, Jasmine's mother, was the first to die. She was brutally stabbed at least a dozen times while she slept. Her father, Mark, fought back with a screwdriver but was also brutally killed. Their eight-year-old son was murdered in his blood-soaked bed. The entire family was brutally killed in their own home and the scene was one of unimaginable horror. The next day, a neighbor noticed something was amiss when a young boy came over to his friend's house and thought he saw a body through the window. He ran home and told his mother, who called the police. When the authorities arrived at the Richardson residence, they found the entire family had been brutally murdered. And one family member, the 12-year-old daughter of the dead couple, was missing. But Jasmine was not missing for long. The police quickly pieced together the events of that fateful night and arrested her and Steinke. They were charged with three counts of first-degree murder and found guilty in a trial that shocked the nation. Jasmine Richardson, at just 12 years old, became the youngest person convicted on multiple counts of murder in Canada's history. The nation was in shock and disbelief that a young girl could be capable of such heinous crimes. The trial was a media circus, with journalists from all over the world descending on the small town of Medicine Hat. During the trial, it was revealed that Jasmine had been the mastermind behind the murders. She had convinced Steinke to go along with her plan, and it was her that had taken the lead in carrying out the killings. The prosecution painted a picture of a cold and calculating killer who had planned the murders with precision and carried them out with brutal efficiency. The defense, on the other hand, argued that Jasmine had been under the control of Steinke, who had manipulated and coerced her into committing the murders. They argued that she had been a victim herself, trapped in a toxic and abusive relationship. They also pointed to her young age and her lack of understanding of the gravity of her actions. In the end, it was the prosecution's case that won out, and Jasmine was found guilty on all three counts of first-degree murder. The judge sentenced her to the maximum penalty for a youth offender, 10 years in prison. Steinke, who was deemed to be the more culpable of the two, was sentenced to life in prison. The Richardson family murders sent shockwaves through Canada and beyond. 
The case raised difficult questions about the responsibility of parents, the dangers of online relationships, and the role of the media in such high-profile cases. Jasmine was released from prison in 2016 when she was 22 years old. She was granted parole and given a new identity to protect her from the public's wrath. She disappeared into obscurity, her whereabouts known only to a select few. The Richardson family murders will forever be remembered as one of the most shocking and tragic crimes in Canadian history. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more shocking and intriguing stories from around the world. Stay safe.